Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kidshanu Bamitzvatov Lahitatif Basitzi. Amen. And we'll wait just a moment. If, if he doesn't come, it's okay. We can, or he can put it on, if, or I can help him. Okay, uh, Austin, your mom is going to present your talit to you at this time. Amen. Okay. We're going to continue on with our Torah service now uh, with the blessing over Torah study. Uh, each morning, each morning service, we have this blessing. Uh, that way we can begin our day, we can begin our service with a little bit of study, nourishing the mind. We continue now with Sweet as Honey. in just a moment we'll continue may i please ask everyone who's with us today to please put on the mask thank you very much we continue now with our reading from page 180. Mom. <laughs> grandma joan is going to come on up and lead it for us please thank you Our hearts are on this joyous day as you commit yourself to a life of oh, Torah. You're reading this one. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. These are the things that are limitless, of which a person enjoys the fruit of the world. While the principle remains in the world to come, they are honoring one's father and mother, engaging in deeds of compassion, arriving early for study morning and evening, dealing graciously with guests visiting the sick, providing for the wedding couple, accompanying the deed of the burial, being devoted in prayer and making peace among people. But the study of the Torah encompasses them all. Thank you. Continue now with the Hatzi Kaddish, if I could please ask for everyone to rise.
Yeet gada, veit gada, shme raba, bail ma divra, hero te, vayam leek, malhute, be ya he hon of yo me hon of chaye de kobed Israel. Bagala, bagala, uvitz man kariv, vemaru, amen. Yehesh me raba me avora, leal ula me amaya, yit barak, yit barak ve ishtabar, excuse me, yit barak ve ishtabach, yit par vi yit raman yit nase, yit hadar yit ale, yit halal. Shme de kusha brehu, la e main ko behirata, tush behata vene mata, ta me ran, be ama ve maru, amen. We continue now with our formal start to the service, the barhu. <laughs> Continue now with the Shema. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Baruch Shem Kevo. Malhuto Leolam Vaed. Vehafta eight Adonoi Elohecha, Beholevacha, Uvhol Nabshecha, Uvhomeo Deha, Veha you, Hadvarim, Haele, Fasher Anohim. Mitzvacha chayom alevavecha, vershinetam levenecha, verdi barta bam. Beshivet chav bevenecha uvleftecha vederek, ushuk mecha uvkumecha, ushartam leot al yadecha, vechayu le tota float benenecha, uvtavtam al memuzot benitecha. Uvisharecha, Leman Tiskaru Vetzitem et Kol Mitzvotai Venitem Kidoshim Lelochechem, Ani Adonoi Elochechem, Asher Hotziti et Hem Me Eretz Mitzraim Leyot Lechem Leochim, Ani Adonoi Elochechem. Please be seated. And please read with me. Standing on the parted shores of history, I still believe what we were taught before ever we stood at Sinai's foot. 
that wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt, that there is a better place, a promised land, that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness, that there is no way to get from here to there except by joining hands, marching together. Continue now with our song for freedom, Micha Mocha. Who is like you? Everyone would please rise again as Austin will now lead us in the Amida. Adonai Sifatitita Ufia Gita Hilatecha. Adonai, open up my lips, let my mouth may declare your praise. Barukata Adonai. Elohe nu velohe avatena be mote nu. Elohe avraham, elohe ye talk. Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rahel, Elohe Leah, Ha El Hagadol, Hagibor Vahana Ra, El El Yon, Gomel Hasadim Tovim, Vekone Hako, Visoher Astea Vovimaho, Umevig, Geula Livne Venehem, Shema Ashmo Behana Va, Melek Hazer, Umashia Umgame. Baruch Ata Adonai Magen Avraham Visarat Sarah. Atagi Borle Olam Adonai Mehaye Ako Atavrav Le Oshia. Marud Hatal Mehakel Hayim Behezed. Mehaye Hako Be Rahim Beam Beam. So make no flame, Verfe Holim. Uma Tirasarim. Uma Chayem Inimatole Shane Afar Miha Moha Bogivru Umi Domela Melek Mimi Uma Chaye Umas Mia Ishua Lintna Emana Tale Chahayod Hako Barukata Adonoi Magi Mechaye Hako Please be seated. We continue now with silent prayer.
Okay, we are about to enter in to really the, the highlight of this morning's service, which is going to be reading from the Torah. It's a really big deal to be able to do it. Torah scrolls are still made the same way they have been for thousands of years, which is to say they're handwritten by a scribe on parchment and with ancient Hebrew. One of the features of ancient Hebrew well, three of the features of ancient Hebrew. One, it's obviously a foreign language of the foreign alphabet, so they have to learn that. Two, there's no punctuation. So knowing where to pause, for example, between senses, that's something that they have to be able to learn how to do. And there's no vowels. So when they're looking at it, all they're looking at really are a whole bunch of consonants. And with a whole bunch of consonants, they're able to turn that in to a reading something that is sacred text and sacred wisdom uh, for not just the Jewish faith, but many faith groups uh, over thousands of years. And this is what they've been working to do, not only to be able to pronounce from the scroll, um, but also to learn what it says and its teachings that it has to offer. So first uh, will come the Torah reading. After that, they actually have a second biblical reading called the Haftarah, Haftarah means additional. And then after that, they'll be sharing their wisdom and their insights with all of us so that we can hear uh, both what the Torah means, literally in translation, but after that, um, some of the lessons that they have taken away from it. So uh, on this occasion of them becoming B'nai Mitzvah, which is plural for bar or bat mitzvah, on the occasion of them becoming B'nai Mitzvah, uh, they are our teachers and we are their students. Of course, we're all students for our entire lives, um, but it's a special responsibility that takes a great deal of effort and work and preparation and dedication to not just be a student, but to also be a teacher. And so I'm looking forward to them being our teachers. Uh, we are going to be opening the ark. If I could invite our ark openers forward to the bima, please. If I could ask everyone to please rise as they do so. Joan, if I could invite you to the bima as well, please. If you would uh, leave your mask on though, please. Thank you. Thank you. If you would please open the ark. And Austin and Jennifer, if I could have you please. Thank you. We have a, and if you would face the congregation, please. We have, a, you might want a little bit of space from the table. Back from, there you go. <laughs> We have, a, we have a custom in our congregation of um, passing down the scroll from one generation to another. It symbolizes the chain of tradition, passing the scroll down from grandparent to parent to child. Um, we have a number of Torah scrolls. We're blessed to have a number of Torah scrolls in our congregation. Uh, one of them, the one that we're going to be using to pass down the Torah scroll is... Um, one that is uh, for, written in the year 1780. So what is that, 241 years old. It's a very old scroll. It comes from the Jewish community of Byzance, which is located outside of Prague. Sadly, that community was destroyed in the Holocaust. Um, and there's only a little bit remaining from that Jewish community. One of the things remaining from that Jewish community, though, is their Torah scroll. And we are its custodian now. So we'll be passing it down symbolically from one generation to the next. Uh, Austin, your grandmother, Jennifer, your mom, Joan will be removing the Torah scroll from the ark to help us to do that. While this is happening, we'll be listening to the music Al Shlosha Devarim on three things the world stands, on Torah, on good deeds, and on acts of loving kindness.
All right. So Austin and Jennifer, you both held it. That's the weight of tradition being passed down. So there you go. Um, Austin, if you would pass that back to your grandmother, please. She's going to place it back in the ark. Thank you. Please be seated. Frank, if you would stay up here, please. And also, if you take your place at the tour scroll, please. Frank, if you join over there, please. Austin, if you would, please take the tour mantle off uh, from the tour scroll. You can go ahead, open it up, and find your spot. You see the yod, the pointer right on the side? Excellent. Okay, so Austin is about to be called to the Torah for the very first time. Okay, Austin is going to be called to the Torah for the very first time as a bar mitzvah. It's a really big deal. But before he is, um, his parents, are, Frank and Jennifer, are going to offer him words of blessing. Uh, in a more traditional setting, those words of blessing might be the parents offering God a prayer of thanksgiving, saying, dear God, thank you so much. This boy is now a bar mitzvah. We're done. <laughs> job over, job completed. Um, it's not quite the same meaning uh, right now uh, in our congregation or in 2021, but nonetheless, Austin, before you are called to the Torah as a bar mitzvah, uh, the last thing you'll hear before me inviting you to the Torah are your parents offering you blessing. So if you would please, Frank and Jennifer. Into our hands, oh God, you have placed your Torah to be held high by parents and children and taught by one generation to the next. Whatever has befallen us, our people have remained steadfast in loyalty to the Torah. It was carried in the arms of parents that their children might not be, that might not be deprived of the birthright. And now we pray that you, Austin Cooper Simotis, may always be worthy of this inheritance. Take its teachings into your heart and turn past it and in turn, pass it on to your children and those who come after you. May you be a faithful Jew, searching for wisdom and truth, working for justice and peace. May the one who has always been our guide inspire you to bring honor to our family and to the house of Israel. Blessed is Adonai, our God, who gives me the honor and privilege of entrusting you with the Torah. Amen. Now, Austin, we invite you forward to the Torah as a bar mitzvah. Ya'amod ha'chatan ha'bar mitzvah Ariel ben Leah harishon. Baruch anai hamvarach le'olam va'ed. Baruch anai hamvarach le'olam va'ed. Baruch ata anai Elohei ne'melech ha'olam asher bar harbanu mikol Amen. Amen. I 
Ida bear Adonai El Moshe, Rami Bar Sinai Boho Moe, Behad, Lehodesh, Hassani, Bashana, Hassani, Letsivotam, Merit, Mitraim, Lemor, Su et Rosh, Kol Adat, Bene, Israel, Leman, Tiskaru, Veasi, Tam, Leve, Avotam, Bumis Par, Shamot, Kol, Zahar, Lege, 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 Mi Ben, Esrim, Shana, Va, Mala, Kol, Yotse, Sava, Be Israel, Tif Kadu, Atam, Lativotam, Ata, Vaharon. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam Asher Nata Lanu Torah Emet V'chai Olam Nata Betenu Baruch Ata Adonai Nutein Hatura. Amen. Okay, we are now going to uh, roll the scroll over a little bit. Um, same Torah portion, um, but Jennifer is going to be reading from a slightly different portion. Put a paper clip to remember our spot. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just make sure I know where my spot is. Where is my spot, Rabbi? Okay, and Jennifer, just as you offered a blessing to Austin along with Frank, we invite your mom now to come to the Bima, Joan, to offer you a blessing before we invite you to read from the Torah. Our hearts are one of this joyous day as you commit yourself to a life of Torah. A life, we pray, filled with wisdom, caring, and right action. We pray that you will grow each day in compassion of the needy, in concern for the stranger, in love of all people. May the one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and Rachel and Leah, bless you on your becoming a bat mitzvah. May you grow with strength and courage, with vision and sensitivity, and may you always be certain of our love. Amen. Amen. Okay, and Jennifer, now we invite you formally to the Torah as a bat mitzvah. Ta'amo hekala habat mitzvah lia hashenit. Barahu et Adonai Hamvara. Baruch Adonai Hamvara leolam vaed. Baruch Adonai Hamvara leolam vaed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam. Asher barhabanu mikol ha'amin venatan lanu et torato. Baruch Ata Adonai no Tain HaTorah. Amen. Amen. Ve'al 
Mizbah Hazachav Yifresu Beget Tehelet Vehisu Oto Bamivse Or Tahash Vesanu Et Hadav Velaku Et Kol Kile Hashareid Asher Yisharu Tam Be Kodesh Ve Nat Nu El Beget Tehelet Ve Hisu Oto Bami Se or Hold on. Visnu et Hamis Beach Ufarsu Alav Beget Argaman. If you close up. Baruch Ata Adanoi Eloheinu Melech Alam Asher Natan Lanu. Toret amet vechayim olal not to nit to bit to henu baruch ata adonai no ten ha Torah. Amen. If you would. Austin and Jennifer, just having read from the Torah scroll, they've done something that they've been looking forward to for a long time. And any time a moment finally arrives that we've been looking forward to, something that we've been anticipating, there's a blessing in the Jewish faith. It gives thanks to God for giving us life, for sustaining us, and for bringing us to this season. It's called the Shehechianu, and we continue with it now. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehechianu Vekimanu Vehegianu Lazman Hazeh Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehechianu Vekimanu Vehegianu Lazman Hazeh Amen. Thank you. Joan and Frank, you're welcome to return to your seats, please. We're going to continue now with the translation of the Torah reading. So uh, for those of us who aren't completely fluent in ancient Hebrew, uh, can have some sense of what it is that we just heard. from Numbers chapter 1 through 15. On the first day of the second month in the year following the exodus from the land of Egypt, Adonai spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the tent of meeting saying to take sinus of the whole Israelite company of fighters by the clans of its ancestral houses, listing the names of every male head by head you and Aaron shall record them by their groups from the age of 20 years up, all those in Israel who are able to bear arms. So my Torah portions from Bamidbar chapters four, chapter four, excuse me, um, 11 through 13. They shall spread a blue cloth over the altar of gold and cover it with a covering of dolphin skin, and they shall put its poles in place they shall take all the service vessels in which the service in the sanctuary is performed and put them into a blue cloth and cover them with the covering of dolphin skin, which they shall then place on a carrying frame. They shall remove the ashes from the carper altar and spread a purple cloth over it. Thank you. And now, as we're still in the middle of our Torah service, 
uh, still with the Haftra yet to go. It's at this high point in the service that we offer some of our most heartfelt prayers, including prayers for healing. And if anybody is thinking of someone at this time who is not well, somebody who is ill or injured, I invite you to share their name with us so that together we may remember them and pray for their well-being. Uh, first, we'll look around people who are in person with us in the sanctuary, if anybody would like to offer a name. Shannon. Jeff, thank you. Shannon. Mike, thank you. And now for people who are joining us over Zoom, if anybody on the Zoom call would like to share a name, you're welcome to either unmute yourself and share a name out loud, or if you prefer to um, put your name in the chat box. Shannon. Thank you. Shannon, thank you. Raina. And Raina. Michael, Michael, Millie, and Steve. Michael, Millie, and Steve. Patricia Bitzalo. I'm sorry, one more time, please. Patricia Bitzalo and Rabbi Chasen. For both of them, we pray for their healing and well being. Jackie Scholson. And Jackie. Michael and Angela Ost. Michael and Angela, thank you. For those names that were written down, we pray for their healing as well, including Morley and Rory, Elaine Lickfelt, Alan, uh, Laura and Elliot for mentioning me as well, and uh, Olivia and Marty. For all of them whose names have been said out loud, for those that were shared through chat box, through those names uh, that perhaps were not shared publicly but remain in our hearts, people that we're thinking about. At this time, we pray for their healing. We say, May God, who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, God, we ask that you bless and heal all those who are not well. God, would you please bless them with a refuah shlema, a complete healing, a refuah tanefesh, a healing of the spirit, or refuah taguf, and a healing of the body. God, be with them, be as well also with those who love them, and those who provide care for them, granting them compassion, guidance, and skill. Baruch atadonai rofei Blessed are you, God, healer of the sick. Together we say, Amen. We continue now with a song for healing uh, based off our Mishaberach prayer. Please feel free to join in. We continue now with our service. Uh, we are now on to the Haftarah, the additional biblical reading, which will be led for us by both Austin and Jennifer. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu 
Melikalam Asher Bahar Bin Vim Tovim Bratza Vedivrahim Hane Emarim Be Emmet Barukata Adonai Habuher Batura Uv Moshe Avdo Uv Israel Amo Unvei Haemet Vasedek Vechaya Mispar Bene Israel Keho Chayam Asher Lo Yimad Velo Yis Afer Vehaya Bimkom Asher Ya Amer Lachem Lo Ami Atem Ya Amer Bene Lachem El Chai Venek Besu Bene Yahuda Uvne Yakdav Ve Samu Lachem Rosh Echad Velo Ha Eret, no mean Ha Eret, K Gadok Yom Yitrael Imru La Achekem Ami Ve La Achotikem Ru Ha Mach. Baruch atah anoy elhenu melech alam. So, oh, you got to do your oh, do my Torah first. Sorry, got to do that first. <laughs> All right. Veharati lehem berit bayom hahu im hayat hasade ve im of hashamayim ve remeres haadama. Ve kishet ve hirev ul mil chama eshbor min ha aretz. Vishkav tim le la ve tek va aras tich li le olam. Ve aras tich li besedek. Uv mishprat uvi chesed. Uvrachamim Vaarastich li beemuna Veyadat et Adonai. Now the after. English translation, please. Austin first. Um, the number of people of Israel shall be like the sands of the sea, not to be measured or counted, and where they were called. You are not my people, they shall be called the children of the living God. The people of Judah and Israel shall be gathered together and chose for themselves a single head and rise up from the ground. For the day of Israel will be great. Call your brothers my people and your sisters loved by God. On that day, I will make a covenant for them with beasts of the field, birds of the air, and with creeping things on the ground. I remove the bow, the sword, and war from the land and make them lie down in safety. I will betroth you to me in righteousness and justice, in steadfast love and compassion. I will betroth you to me in faithfulness, and you shall know the eternal. Barukatada no el heno melechalam, sor col ha omim, sadik beho ha do road, ha el ha ne eman, ha moher viose, ham de bear um kaim, she col divra vazedek. Al ha Torah, ve al havdova, ve al han veim, ve al yam ha shabbat haza, shinatata la nu adonoi eloheinu, lik dusha ve linu ha, le havod ul tifaret al ha ko adonoi eloheinu, anachnu modim lach, um varhim otach, yit barach shimcha, Bafichol timid leolam vaed, Baruch ata adonoi me kodesh ha shabbat.
say yasher koach and mazel tov to each of you. They've completed both biblical readings uh, that we'll be hearing today, both from the Torah scroll as well as their hafra. Um, they're going to be telling you all about them in just a moment. Uh, but before they do, we're going to continue now with prayers for the community, which include prayers for the congregation, prayers for the country, and prayers for the state of Israel. Coming up are Kelly and Carolyn Figuel, both teachers at TKC, and Kelly uh, has been their Hebrew teacher uh, for some time now. So uh, we're getting um, the chain of tradition from teacher to student, and then student becomes teacher right here. Source of all being, may the children of this community learn these passions from us. Love of Torah, devotion and prayer, and support of the needy. May we guide with integrity, and may our leadership be your service. May those who teach and nourish us be blessed with satisfaction, and may we appreciate their time and their devotion. Bless us with the fruits of wisdom and understanding, and may our efforts bring fulfillment and joy. Baruch ata Adonai, sh'otecha levadecha b'yira na'avod. Amen. Continue now with the prayer for our country. Thus says Adonai, this is what I desire, to unlock the fetters of wickedness, and unite the cords of lawlessness, to let the oppressed go free, to break off every yoke, share your bread with the hungry, and take the wretched poor into your home. When you see the naked, give clothing, and do not ignore your kin. If you banish the yoke from your midst, the menacing hand and the evil speech, if you, are, if you offer compassion to the hungry and satisfy the famished creature, then your light shall shine in darkness. Thank you. O oh, guardian of life and liberty, may our nation always merit your protection. Teach us to give thanks for what we have by sharing it with those who are in need. Keep our eyes open to the wonders of creation and alert to the care of the earth. May we never be lazy in the work of peace. May we honor those who have died in defense of our ideals. Grant our leaders wisdom and forbearance. May they govern with justice and compassion. Help us to all appreciate one another and to respect the many ways that we may serve you. May our homes be safe from affliction and strife and our country be sound in body and spirit. Amen. O heavenly one, protector and redeemer of Israel, bless the state of Israel, which marks the dawning of hope for all who seek peace. Shield us beneath the wings of your love. Spread over it the canopy of your peace. Send your light and truth to all who lead and advise, guiding them with your good counsel. Establish peace in the land and fullness of joy for all who dwell there. Amen. And now, time for First Austin to share some words with us, a speech that he's prepared for the occasion. Being bar mitzvah means to me that I'm growing up into manhood and putting in the dedication to my Jewish learning. I know this type of dedication is important to living a successful life. I can 
I'm grateful for the opportunity to do this with my mom to create memories and to learn something new together. I have had fun along the way and learned so much about Judaism. I went from being so shy that I couldn't, couldn't, couldn't share my favorite uh, ice cream with my class to being here today speaking in front of y'all. My life is filled with sports, friends, school, and I have to find a way to put the time and the effort about, into learning Judaism and Hebrew. I feel accomplished that I have come so far and have learned so much. Being Jewish has given me the foundation to understand hard work and working towards a goal. I chose this Torah portion because it relates, it, I related to it. As I love the outdoors and this portion takes place in the wilderness of Sinai, there's a bunch of tem tents and a camp with people guarding them, which reminds me of, of Capture the Flag. Capture the Flag is a game I play with all my friends where everyone is having fun. I also love riding my dirt bike. Whenever I ride it in the woods, I feel free. I love how the fresh air makes me feel. My Torah portion states God telling Moses to take a total count of the entire community of the sons of Israel, according to their families, according to their father's house, counting the names of all males 20 years and upwards. Only the men over age of 20 are getting counted. Why? Why are they only counting the men over the age of 20? What about a 19 year old male? What about women? They were getting counted to see who can work and be in the army. Today, men and women are in the army at the age of 18 in the United States. Why can't they just work just as hard? It makes me think, why are we not all equal? They're risking their lives for the country and considered adults at the age of 18. If I, if I, was told that I can't go ride my dirt bike unless I was 20, it would make me feel very disappointed and angry. I'm sure that's how they felt when they could not join the army or work. There is a really old tradition in Judaism that we don't count people. There is a hesitancy on counting in the Jewish religion. The Holocaust made it worse when people were getting numbers tattooed on their arms. It just has been thought of in a bad way. So say you were so say you needed 10 people who needed to make sure they were in a group to perform something. They could pick up a piece of paper and put it in an empty hat. And once everybody did it, the empty hat would be full of 10 pieces of paper. That example shows one of many ways Jewish people have made counting creative. It shows that you can be, you can do, you can be able to do many things in more ways than one. Also, it's not just counting people, it's us realizing that we wouldn't be whole without you. I feel being included is a big part of feeling counted. When you're not included in something, you feel like you're not wanted. So when you're counting people, you usually want to use their names and not give them numbers, especially in Judaism. As a hockey player, I will always associate the number 99 with Wayne Gretzky. He plays center and holds 10 unbreakable records, such as most career, points 2,857, most assists in a season 163, most assists in a career 1,963, and 50 goals in 39 games. Now we would not necessarily remember all those numbers. It's his overall performance that makes him such a memorable athlete. We cannot measure the accomplishments by the numbers alone. It's the whole player that matters. The numbers can only judge him as an athlete, but not as a person. It does not make someone feel good if they're thought of as statistics, such as our age, phone number, social security number. It's so much more. It's our stories and how we come together and treat people that makes us memorable. Also, inclusion has been, been a big part of my life. I always wanna make sure someone is included because it makes me feel upset. And if I'm not included, I remember when I was younger, there was a new kid that came to school and had not made any friends yet. I saw him eating alone at lunch, so I joined him and make sure he felt included. After a period of time, he grew to have many friends so that we both share today. If I know if someone did that for me, I would appreciate it so much. It's important to have people you can count on in life. I'm so grateful that I have many people that in my life that count. I know I count to them as well. That relates to being counted because it's not just numbers that count, it's who you are that counts. I would like to say thank you to my mom for doing this with me and being so loving and funny. My dad for his support and his sense of humor. My sister for messing with me and making me laugh. My Nana and Nana Norma 
for always keeping a smile on my face, Rabbi and Kelly for helping me with my Jewish uh, journey and my Hebrew, my family, all my cousins, aunts and uncles for being loving and caring, my friends for being you and keeping me in check, and thank you all for coming together. Austin, thank you so much for sharing those words with us. Jennifer, please. Thank you, Austin. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, it makes my heart so full to know that we're surrounded by so much love and positive energy. I appreciate all of you being a part of Austin's in my special day. So as most of you probably know, I have a very tender heart. So I'm gonna to try to do this without crying too much because I'm already crying. <laughs> Um, so I'm sure some of you are wondering, why am I up here today at this juncture in my life? Um, I wanted to share with you a little bit about my journey that led me to want to be a bat mitzvah at this point. It started, um, I really started to think about it when Frank and I had Austin. While pregnant with Austin, my father passed away, but prior to his passing, I had a chance to let him know that I planned on honoring Jewish tradition by using the A, as his name was Arnold. So in carrying on some of my father's important values, I wanted to raise Austin Jewish. Although my father was not a super religious man, he held a high spiritual value into a male getting bar mitzvahed. He was very old school in his thinking, and I knew that this day would be one of the proudest moments of his life. I spoke with my husband, Frank, and he warmly and lovingly agreed to raise Austin Jewish. With that said, I really did not have the foundation to be a good leader or supporter to Austin, as I did not know much about the Jewish religion. I did know how to make a killer chicken matzo ball soup and an extremely moist brisket, but I knew that that was not enough. So I asked him how he felt if I joined him in this journey. He agreed that it would be very special experience to do it together and that it has been. For the past few years, Austin and I have been in Hebrew tutoring together weekly. At a time when our children are teenagers, it can be a very hard time to have that one-on-one -on -one quality time together. This journey has really helped to deepen our bond and commitment to understanding our spiritual practice and family foundation. And here we are today sharing it with you all. My Torah portion is about sacred objects as well as tradition and rituals. The following reading is from Bamid Bar, chapter four. They shall take all the service vessels and put them into a blue cloth and covering them with dolphin skin, which they shall then place on a carrying frame. They shall remove the ashes from the copper altar and spread a purple cloth over it. Upon it, they shall place all the vessels that are used in the service in fire pans, the flesh hooks, the scrapers, and the basins all the vessels of the altar, and over it they shall spread a covering of dolphin skin, and they shall put poles in place. When Aaron and his sons have finished covering the sacred objects and all the furnishings of those sacred objects at the breaking of camp, only then shall the Kolotites come and lift them so that they cannot come in contact with those sacred objects and die. I was really drawn to this Torah, section of Torah because when I read it, it really resonated with me that I could see all the visual, um, see what, what was happening and with the story and the sacred objects. Being a visual person, I felt like I was a part of the action and could understand what they were doing. What I love about Judaism is the tradition in the way that we celebrate our holidays as well as the sacred objects that are a part of our ceremonies and celebrations. Everything from Seder plates, the Ark, the Torah, 
um, the Torah scroll, mezuzahs, yarmulkes, yads, chauffeurs, talits, the eternal light which hangs above the ark, um, to the kiddush cups. When discussing this portion with Rabbi, he brought to my attention and posed the question, what makes something holy? I really don't think that there's a specific answer that's right or wrong. What makes something holy to me and sets it apart is the history and how that object was used, the different generations, what it went through, and the stories behind it. What it was used for, as well as how it was cared for. The cleansing of objects to the way that they are handled. I feel so blessed today to be able to be wearing my father's talit and Austin to be wearing my brother Gary's talit, his uncle. Even though my father is no longer physically with us, he lives on with us through memories. Stories and his sacred object from his bar mitzvah. Sorry. So, for instance, if we think about a Seder plate that was passed on from generation to generation in our families, that Seder plate then has become part of our tradition and is used on the highest of our holidays. In order to protect and keep our sacred objects, we have to have some rules around them. We have to have some boundaries. We have to respect ourselves, others, and the other and or the objects that are involved. From how we may wash our hands before touching the Torah or using gloves or a pointer when reading from the Torah, the Yad, so we protect the pages and continue to carry down these sacred objects. When we think about a raw piece of amethyst, the outer coating of that amethyst tends to look like a rough rock. And as we look, at the layers within that transition into this beautiful dark purple semi-precious stone in the center. I believe nature shows us all the biomimicry in so many beautiful applications. The amethyst is just one that came to me as it's my birthstone and I have it in multiple areas of my home and on my wrist from my beautiful family. It's a wonderful example of how we have to protect ourselves and protect those objects and relationships and live life and with healthy boundaries. Judaism shows us this in the rituals that happen, such as the beginning of Shabbat on Friday nights with the lighting of the candles all the way into Havdalah, which in Hebrew means separation. Havdalah is a ceremony that marks the end of Shabbat and brings us into the new week. The ritual involves lighting a special candle that has multiple wicks, saying a blessing over the cup of wine or juice, and smelling sweet spices. We think of lighting the candles as the beginning, or a boundary as the beginning of this beautiful holiday, and time to rest and relax, and it shows us how rituals and sacred objects are used in setting boundaries and holding sacred value. When we show respect and use our boundaries, it helps us to live a more harmonious life, that it makes our life easier in the protection of ourselves as well as others. In my early years of life, I didn't understand boundaries as much as I do now. And I've really studied and worked hard to understand how to have healthy boundaries. And through that learning, I have been able to maintain a healthy relationship with myself as well as others. Tradition, rituals, sacred objects, and boundaries are all part of my daily practice. Studying Judaism and Torah, it has exposed me to the sacred objects in my life that relate to Judaism. And through that, my family has chosen to make a menorah together, thanks to my wonderful husband, who is very talented. Um, so uh, the... Menorah in Hebrew means lamp. We use the menorah during Hanukkah to light eight branches. But on a different note, if we think of, uh, but on a different note, we think of it as keeping the light shining within. It's always a beautiful reminder to take pause. Think about how do you keep your own light within to shine so bright? The intent of this menorah 
is for it to live on within our family for generations to come. Our hope is it will become their sacred object one day. I would like to take a moment to thank a few people who really helped make this happen. Our amazing, wonderful rabbi, Rabbi Holtz, who has patiently worked with us week in and week out, his calm voice, his help, his support in educating us about the Jewish faith in a way that we can apply it in our lives and his thoughtfulness will never be forgotten. Kelly Figel, who you all met, um, who has been the light that keeps us shining. She not only has been our Hebrew tutor, but also an extreme dog lover who understands our relationship with our furry ones and is one of the sweetest people that I have ever met. She truly dedicates her life to helping others. Carolyn Figel, her amazing mother, um, best friend and education consultant for the temple. Carolyn has had a huge impact on my love for learning about the Jewish faith. She's so creative, animated, and always finds a way to protect, excuse me, to present the information in a fun and intriguing manner. Lori Dreffen, who's on Zoom, she's been the glue that helps to keep us all together. She's always been available and welcoming at the temple. She's the queen bee who wears many hats along with being the Hebrew program supervisor. Susan Phillips, who we call Susie Q. Your love for your chocolates is equal to mine. Well, maybe. Um, I love spending our Sundays together when we were in person. Your warm, friendly nature always makes us feel welcome. Austin's incredible, amazing, fun friends, some of whom I've known since they were super little. It has been such a pleasure watching you all grow up. And my friends, if you're on Zoom, you are like family to us, and we thank you for being a part of today. I thank you, my friends, for always supporting me in all my discoveries and interests. I truly value that you are all in my life, and you're in my life because you make me a better person. And my family, each and every one of you, those who are here today, um, I know that it was no small feat for you to come this way. In these days, it means to me that you were able to make, oh, I'm sorry. It means the world to me that you were able to make it happen. Also, those joining us on Zoom, it's such a huge gift that we've been able to have this vehicle through this past year. My wonderful daughter, Caitlin, for all her laughter, her love, her support, she's one of the most creative, loving spirits that I know. My mom, who's the star that shines so, so bright, she's the most positive person I know, along with being the hardest worker. Her love and dedication to my family is endless, and we are so grateful you are here today. And of course, my wonderful husband, Frank. He has been our biggest cheerleader and has been so patient, having our dedication every Sunday towards our Jewish practice. It's amazing to have such a supportive husband and a hands-on father. Thank you from our love to yours. Jennifer, thank you so much for sharing those words. Frank, if I could invite you to come on up. And we have a few more words. Thank you everyone for coming first. Austin. We are so proud to be your parents. We know that you're going to be a great man and you have compassionate soul that you'll carry out with everything you do. An independent spirit, a trailblazer that is Austin Cooper Simotis. You've turned 13 and in many cultures, it is a pivotal time when a boy becomes a man. But what is a real man? Sorry, a real man gives, he cares for women. He lifts up his brothers and he stands for what's right. Here are some tidbits of advice we would like to share with you as you start your journey into this manhood. These important ones to never forget. Other kids out there, listen up. <laughs> uh, and hopefully someday you'll be as lucky as we are to share this with your child. 
Be respectful. Treat others like you'd like to be treated. Have a firm handshake and look people in the eye. Always say thank you, especially when you have been given somebody's time. Always respect your elders and be kind to those less fortunate. Think before you speak. Work hard and remember, nobody owes you anything. You're not entitled to anything based on who you are, where you come from, or what you look like. If you're willing to work hard and go the extra mile, you can and will achieve great things. Be a gentleman, pull out chairs, open doors, learn to dance, be a good listener. Don't just wait for your turn to talk. Use your manners, please. Thank you, you're welcome. Yes, ma'am, and no, sir, or yes, sir. <laughs> when you are with people, be fully present. When hiking in nature, take only photographs and leave only footprints. Leave things better than you find them. Believe in yourself and have an integrity. Go for it. Dream big dreams. Do hard things. Attempt the impossible. Be brave. Take chances. Be optimistic. Don't be a quitter and don't procrastinate. Don't compromise your character by lying or cheating. A man is only as good as his word. Say what you mean and do what you say. Speak truth even if it costs you something. Remember that actions speak louder than words. When entrusted, keep a secret. Sometimes silence is the best option. A wise man once said nothing. Always do the right thing. Be true to yourself. Don't be afraid, afraid to stand up for what you believe, even if you stand alone. Give credit when credit's due and help those less fortunate. Unplug and be still. Embrace the quiet, savor the silence. Read, write, draw, think, listen to music. Explore the outdoors. Walk barefoot in the dirt. Enjoy your own company. Keep a healthy bo body, mind, and soul. Use food as your medicine. Fill your body with healthy choices. Fill your brain with positive thoughts. Always look on the bright side of things. There is always something good in every bad situation. Cultivate a relationship with God and know you are made in his likeness and are loved. Don't just reach out when things get hard. Thank him when times are good too. Remember who you represent, God and the Samotis family. You are blessed with amazing parents, a sister, grandmothers, aunts, cousins, and uncles. Be sure to cherish your time with them as they know a few things and are your true connection to your ancestors. Time is your most valuable asset. So, treat it that way. Surround yourself with smart, creative, and fun people that want to spend time with you. You are amazing, Austin. At the ripe old age of 13, you've experienced more than most adults have done in a lifetime. We can't wait to see where your journey takes you. We love you and we'll always be here for you. Over here. <laughs> And we are so proud of the man you're becoming today and all the hard work and dedication that you showed and accomplished this goal. Love mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we all know now that from the words that we've heard from Austin, Jennifer and Frank, uh, it's a very wise family. We're going to continue on with some presentations from Temple Kehila Chaim, and Lori Dreffen is going to be presenting on behalf of our congregation. Mazel Tov, Jennifer and Austin. Thank you, Lori. I'm, I'm completing this chapter in the Jewish journey. When we first met, which you may recall was a Hanukkah celebration at TKC, so maybe that was the light, a light too. Um, you both said that your top interest was social action. You held true to that, joining social action events at TKC whenever possible. In addition, volunteered for TKC school events and temple projects with a dedication to do the best, be there for everybody else who was there, 
and always with care and both of you with big smiles is what I remember. Thank you for that. And I look forward to your continuing these with us in the next period of your Jewish growth. We have for each of you some gifts uh, from the sisterhood. It's a set of candlesticks from the brotherhood, a kiddish cup, and from the congregation, a book called On the Doorposts of Your House. Once again, Mazel Tov. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, then. Now I get to say just, just a few words. It's not often that a mother and a son get to go through this together. But sure enough, that's what they did. And I think that's just such a special and special and wonderful thing that the two of you were able to share this learning opportunity and this uh, growth opportunity together. When I got a chance to meet with both of you each and every week, even though it was primarily over Zoom, it was this wonderful opportunity for the three of us, not just to catch up and you know review Hebrew or whatnot, though that's important and wonderful, but a chance for us to discuss many different things. When Austin was reading from the beginning of his Torah portions from the start of the book of Numbers, and it's called that because there's a census at the beginning, they count the Israelites. And we talked about what it takes to count in the community, what it takes to be a part of a community, what it takes to uh, be considered somebody who can contribute. And just as Austin taught us during his speech, maybe we would um, play with who counts and who doesn't and what it means to contribute, but the general principle of making sure that people feel counted is something that he grasped onto right away, particularly with his care and concern for inclusion, making sure that people are included into groups and communities, which he not only grasps intellectually, but also in practice, because he's a good classmate and a good community member, going out of his way to bring people in and to make sure that they feel welcome and comfortable and part of the group. And Jennifer, reading from the same tour portion, but a little bit on, you shared with us all about the meaning of some of these ritual objects. That ritual actually has a way, and the objects that we use, um, such as the beautiful menorah that uh, you and your family uh, made together, the way that they symbolize um, something perhaps more than just what the object itself is. You were talking about the amethyst as well, how on the inside it's so beautiful, but you might not know it just looking at it from the outside, and that it's worth exploring um, some things more and more, because the more you get into it, the more time you spend with something, the greater appreciation there might be for it. Um, I said before, you know, after Frank spoke, but certainly after the two of you spoke, um, we all heard a lot of wisdom today from Austin, from Jennifer, as they've learned about their Torah portion, as they've explored it and really um, brought some amazing insights that um, not just are relevant, but incredibly important for us. There it goes, still on. <laughs> um, to remember this occasion, Jennifer and Austin, I have for you a um, couple things. One are the books that have already been mentioned there with you right now. I've also got some certificates for you. So they're mostly, but not entirely the same. Both have um, certificates, one certificate that looks like this. You both signed it. These both say almost the same thing. Um, a bar or a bat mitzvah certificate with your names on the today's date, the Torah portion that you read from. It says that in the presence of Temple Kilat Haim, Roswell, Georgia, that in becoming B'nai Mitzvah, both you, Austin, and Jennifer have accepted the privileges and responsibilities of being a Jew, which include lifelong Torah study in the keeping of mitzvot, sacred obligations, Shabbat, Holy Day, and life cycle observances, that you both um, 
you, you both commit to participation in the life of the synagogue as you have been doing, the Jewish community in Israel, and dedication to tikkun olam, improving our world. Uh, Austin, on your certificate, you signed it along with myself and your parents. Jennifer, you've signed as well with myself witnessing for it. You'll both have this. I have my bar mitzvah certificate still hanging up in my office. Uh, before I had it in my office, it still traveled along with me. Keep it. It's a remembrance of this day and how special it was. Austin, in addition to that, you get a certificate that your mom doesn't get. So, <laughs> all right. This is a certificate of the gift variety. It's a $250 gift certificate presented to Austin in honor of you becoming a bar mitzvah. It is to be used on a high school trip to Israel um, when you are ready to do that. So you can put this perhaps towards future travel to Israel, Austin. Put these in envelopes for both of you to take home. And in addition um, to these presentations and the words we've already heard, I'd like to offer you my own blessing at this time. If I could ask everyone here in the sanctuary to please rise. Jennifer, Austin, in the presence of the open ark, in the presence of the congregation, both the congregation that's here with us in the sanctuary, as well as the congregation that is here with us over the internet, in front of them and God, it's my privilege to be offering you this blessing. This blessing was first offered by Aaron, the high priest of Israel, the brother of Moses and Miriam. He offered it to the entire people of Israel when they were departing Egypt and on their way to the promised land. For thousands of years, it's been passed down as a sacred blessing, typically offered to an entire community, just as Aaron did. But on this occasion of the two of you becoming B'nai Mitzvah, a blessing from me to you. May God bless you and keep you. May God enlighten you. May God be gracious to you. Yisa Adonai Panave Lecha, Vayisem Lecha, Shalom. May God's face be lifted up to you. May God grant you the blessing of peace. Ken Yihiratzon, so may be God's will. Together we say, Amen. If you would, please remain standing as we continue with our service with the Mourner's Kaddish. Our thoughts turn to those who have departed this earth, our own loved ones, those whom our friends and neighbors have lost, the martyrs of our people whose graves are unmarked, and those of every race and nation whose lives have been a blessing to humanity. As we remember them, we meditate on the meaning of love and loss, of life and death. This week, we are remembering Amy Beth Adams, Lillian Traub, Jose Pereira Morente, Catherine G. Rus, Gerald Simon, Aubrey Milton Kahn, and Margaret King. If anybody else would like to share a name with us, somebody that you are remembering who died either recently or at this time in years past, please feel free to share their name. First, uh, if anybody in the sanctuary uh, in person would like to share a name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And if anybody on Zoom would like to offer a name, I invite you to do so. Berman. Thank you. And from the chat box as well, John, Miriam, and Jennifer. We continue now with Mourner's Kaddish. Yitzkadal. Beyitkadash Shimei Raba, Velma Divra Hirute Vianlich Malchute, Bechayechon 
ביומכון ובחיי דחו בית ישראל, בגלה ובזמן קריב ואמרו, אמן. יהי רבה מבורך לעולם על מי על מיה, יתברך וישתבח ויתבער ויתרומם ויתנשא, ויתהדר ויתעלה ויתעלל שמי דקדושה וריחו. לאלה מנקו בירכתה ושירתה, תוש בכתה ונחמתה, דמירם ואלמה ואמרו, אמן. יהא שלמה רבה מן שמיא, וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו, אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו, Amen. Please be seated. We're going to continue now with Kiddush and Motzi. Austin, Jennifer, if you would please bring forward the Kiddush cup and the challah. We're going to begin by singing Vishamru, which is going to be led for us by our music director, Morgan. Vishamru is a song about God's relationship with all of us, um, with the sign or symbol of that relationship being the Sabbath, being Shabbat. Uh, that God loves us so much we get a weekend. Uh, so says God. So <laughs> that is Vishamru. We're going to begin singing that, led for us by Morgan. After that, we'll have our blessing over the Kiddush cup over the drink and the hala as well. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam Bere Peri Hagafen. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and we continue now with the Motzi. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam chamotzi lechem min hararetz. Amen. And also, why don't you tear off a piece of chala for yourself and then pass it to your mom.
Don't forget what dad said to you. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got uh, just our closing song left. It's called Kehila Kedosha, which means our holy community. If you are a 10, that means if you are you, then we are Nitzavim. We are gathered here together as a Kehila Kedosha, as a holy community. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. And again, Mazel Tov to Austin and to Jennifer on um, a job well done. Shabbat Shalom to everyone who's here, everybody who's joining us over Zoom. Thank you for joining us. Shabbat Shalom, everyone.